Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless His holy name. I thank God for the privilege and opportunity to come again and share with you these moments of devotion. In the life of every child of God, uh, there will come times when we are brought into conflict, face crisis, go through periods of adversity. There will be times when we would be thrown into the fire. Fires of conflict, fires of crisis, fires of sickness and sadness and suffering. In Daniel chapter 3, uh, there is the story of three young men who faced the problem of whether or not to bow before golden image that the king had erected of himself. This golden image was 90 feet tall. It was gold plated. It was a lifeless image of the king. But on a set day, at a set time, music was to be played and all of Babylon was to bow before this golden image. The day came, the hour came, the music was sounded, and all of Babylon bowed with the exception of three young men we've come to know by the names of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. The king was informed all of Babylon bowed with the exception of three. These three young men were brought in before the king. They were given a second opportunity to bow, but again, they refused to bow. They had been raised by principle, and that principle simply was, thou shalt have no other gods before me. And because of that, they could not bow. They would not bow. They did not bow. And they, their answer to the king was, O oh, king, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter uh, of whether or not to bow, but because of the principles we've been raised by and what we live by and because our relationship with our God, we just won't bow. We will face the fiery furnace because we know our God is able to deliver us. But if not, we still will not bow. God will always be with us in the fire. Even if he doesn't spare us from the fire, we will never go in alone. He is in the fire with us. The God we serve has never promised to keep us from the fires of affliction, adversity, pain, and problem. What he has promised is that we are never alone and he will go through the fire with us. They were faced with bow or die. Their decision was we'd rather die than bow. Because of our faith in God, our relationship with our God, we're not the bowing Kind. And in all of our lives, there comes the day when we have to make the decision whether we will stand for God or bow to the ways and things of this world. There will always be pressure to compromise, to make life easier. The easier option would have been to just bow and then move on. But easier doesn't always mean better. Here's the truth. Here's the reality. No one likes the test of fire, being tested by the fires of affliction and adversity, pain and problem of sickness, sadness, sorrow, suffering. Our faith will come into conflict with this world and sparks will begin to fly. The real question is, how do you face adversity, affliction, pain, 
problem, trouble, and tragedy. They would not alter their walk with God for anyone or anything. They decided if we have to go into the furnace, we will. We will simply go into the furnace trusting our God because he, we know that He's able. And this kind of faith brings God into the fire with them. They didn't bend. They didn't beg. They didn't bow. They didn't change. That furnace, the Bible says, was heated seven times hotter than it ever had been before. And they were bound and then thrown into the fire. The amazing thing about the story is that the Bible says the men who threw them in were consumed by the fire. Not Nebuchadnezzar, the king who gave the order, but the men who carried out his order. And sometimes you need to be careful about how you allow other folk to use you to do their dirty work. There are some people who won't say or do certain things. They'll get other folk to say them and do them for them. The Bible says the men who threw them in were consumed by the fire. The Bible says that the fire burned those ropes that they were bound by. All the fire did was set them free. What they had been bound with and thrown into the fire, the fire burned the rope without burning them. The fact about it, the Bible says when they came out of the furnace, their bodies were not burned, their clothes were not burned, their clothes didn't even smell like smoke. They came out of the fire clean. And sometimes God allows us to go through the fire to set us free. Other times, he allows us to go through the fire as a purifying process. Gold, precious metal, is not purified in a deep freezer, but in a fiery furnace. God has purpose even when we walk through the furnace. It's not a question of if I go through the furnace. The real question is, what will I be like when I come out on the other side? King was restless all night, gave a command the next morning that the door of the furnace be opened. And when he looked into his surprise, he found that they had not been consumed by the fire, but there they were walking around in the furnace and they were not alone. The king raised the question, didn't we throw in three? The answer was yes, O king. His response is, I now see four, and the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. The king realized they were not alone. When you walk with God, others will be able to see it. It is possible for a Christian to suffer the fires of trial, trouble, and even tragedy, and still come through without being burned. God has not promised that you will not go through the furnace. He has promised to be there with you. I close on this. When the king had them to come forth from the furnace, the three men he came, he threw in, came out. Where is the fourth man? He's still in the furnace, waiting on you and waiting on me so that when we are thrown into life's fires of affliction and adversity, he's already there waiting on you to remind you you are not alone, even in life's fiery furnaces. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for this day, and we thank you for the privilege of being your children. We thank you that when we have to walk through life's fires, we are not alone. You, has, you have promised never to leave us nor forsake us. We thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let me thank you for this time of sharing with us. I want to remind you of our prayer calls on 
Wednesday mornings at 7 a.m. and then Saturday evenings at 6 p.m. I also want to remind you of our noonday Bible study on Wednesdays and then Sunday school review Sunday morning at 8.45, worship at 9 a.m. Also, thank you for your continued giving. If you have not been giving, I hope and trust you will begin giving that we might continue to support the work of the Lord, our church, and this pastor. If you are not a member of the Mount Olive Church, but this ministry is best blessing your life, we ask that you will sow a seed into this ministry. God bless you, and you have a great day in the Lord.